The Super Bowl is an annual event that brings together three types of people. The fans who are lucky enough to see their team make it to the big game, people who are actively rooting against one of the teams, and people who just want to hang out with their friends, have some good food, and have some good beers. With the major event of this week's episode, The Drop, centering on Super Bowl Sunday, let's take a look at some of America's favorite sports traditions. You could say the Super Bowl is just as much about food as it is about football and commercials. And, at least as in the case of this week's episode, a mafia-run bar that will supply that evening's drop. For the Super Bowl, one in seven Americans, that's about 48 million people, order takeout. After Thanksgiving, Super Bowl Sunday is the second most popular day to order takeout. 60% of those orders are for pizza. 1.25 billion chicken wings are e eaten, equaling 162.5 million pounds of chicken. 19 and a half million pounds of chips are purchased with avocados being a fan favorite. And if you're like me, you've never met a guacamole you didn't like. 10% of Americans use their grills, second only to another great holiday, the 4th of July. It is estimated that 14 billion hamburgers are made while other options include hot dogs, steak, bratwurst, or grilled vegetables. Popcorn and nuts are popular snacks because 3.8 million pounds of popcorn and 2.5 million pounds of nuts are eaten. And these are great for customers to snack on while waiting for meals to be cooked, for takeout to arrive, or a mafia goon waiting for that day's drop to occur. Okay. On to the fun stuff. 325 and a half million gallons of beer are consumed during Super Bowl weekend, equating to 50 million cases, which is enough liquid to fill an Olympic-sized pool almost 2,000 times. But not everyone drinks beer, and to that end, people spend $2.4 million on soda. So if you don't drink, you can still enjoy a bubbly beverage in a dive bar or at your friend's house. While food and drink was not a huge element in the drop, crime sure was. And every Super Bowl Sunday has its share of crime before, during, and after the game, drop bars notwithstanding. And so there's, there's always been discussion around crime and Super Bowl Sunday. And this leads a lot of people to assume that Super Bowl Sunday leads to crime. And certainly we have seen celebrations for the winning team, either um, for the people at the game or people in that city having makeshift celebrations that can cause mayhem. That certainly happens. But let's put a couple of things in context, crime-wise, relative to Super Bowl Sunday. The overall impact of the Super Bowl on crime rates may surprise you, with the majority of studies showing a decrease in crime. One study found that total crime reports decreased by about 25% on Super Bowl Sunday. But in particular, there are more reports of drugs and prostitution before the game and violent crime after the game. And mostly, getting back to those large gatherings, there is alcohol at Super Bowl parties, there's parades and post-game celebrations, and these can all increase the chances of other crimes, such as drunk driving, aggravated assault, resisting arrest, underage drinking, and just general criminal mischief. And again, no word on how many dive bars act as mafia fronts on one of the busiest days of the year for bars. 
As for Super Bowl 47, the game from the year the drop was filmed, the Ravens beat the 49ers 34 to 31 in one of the greatest comeback stories of the Super Bowl. And I say that as a 49ers fan. In this game, the Ravens won their second Super Bowl at the time. But what was notable about the game was that for 34 minutes, the power went out in the Superdome. No word on whether a robbery gone awry was to blame. Um, oh, the other big component of the Super Bowl are the ads. So some of the most memorable ads from that year was a creepy Fembot sales lady for the Kia Forte, an Audi commercial where a kid goes to prom alone, then gets punched for kissing the prom queen without her permission, a Dodge Ram commercial paid homage to American farmers, a Miracle Montana stain for Tide, and what was funny was, of course, the 49ers and the Ravens were playing. A gentleman had accidentally gotten a ketchup stain that looked like Joe Montana on his favorite jersey. His wife washed the garment with Tide, and the uh, ending had her say, Go Ravens. <laughs> so a little bit of a house divided, but that's okay when it comes to sports. And of course, a Budweiser commercial with a Clydesdale. And this one showed a former owner who saw his horse in the parade. The horse recognized him and they had a really heartfelt sweet reunion set to Fleetwood Mac's landslide. So certainly a tearjerker. So go ahead and give the subscribe button a Super Bowl shuffle <laughs> so you never miss a thing. As always, new episodes of the Real Relationships podcast drop every Thursday on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. New episodes of this show are always on YouTube every Thursday. We cannot thank our supporters enough. It's because of you that we continue bringing great content here on this YouTube channel, on the podcast, and on our TikTok and Facebook pages. So be sure to follow us on all of the socials. We thank you so much. We'll see you soon. And as always, stay safe.